well with any kind of mobility. It's the same thing playing against a Weaver, right? Yeah. You steal Chikuchi and it's like, oh yeah, I'm like totally unkillable now. It's kind of the same, but I do like it. Plus, I think the Telekinesis, as long as you time it just a little bit after a Cold Feet, you can almost guarantee the Cold Feet's going to stun. Plus, I think it synergizes well with AA in general. Yeah, you were talking about Dandy playing remaining. Emerspear. I think this is the first time we've seen him in this league. But you were saying the way he usually rushes BKB, like, really early. Navi's yeah, I think that would be amazing against this team, Liquid. I think the BKB is both good and bad. It's definitely a little bit better now because Shadow Shaman's picked up by Liquid. So the Disable is something that you're going to have to worry about. The only thing about Shadow Shaman is he's really slow. Like, I think he's 285 base move speed, yeah. so he's like a snail. And you have to be pretty darn close for Hex or Shackle. So getting that close to an Ember Spirit, a Shadow Shaman, is going to be tough unless the Storm is initiating for you. Ten I think this is more remaining. of just kind of like a cheesy, I'm going to get six on my Shadow Shaman, drop wards in a tower with a Five Lycan and just kill it. Remaining. Because right now, Navi, that, like their wave clear consists of basically Rubik. And uh, Elder Titan actually Team picked up by Navi. This is to pick. a pretty low amount of Disable actually coming out from Navi. Yeah, that's actually my primary concern, considering that Storm and Lycan uh, normally requires a lot of Disable. But if you look at the Liquid Bands, they have taken out some of the game's best Disables, uh, especially against both of these heroes. But Navi, one thing does have is the fact that they could burst insanely well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Natural Order is absolutely no joke. So... Ten seconds remaining. No joke at no all. Joke. Like demon. No joke. Like Demon. Five so seconds he doesn't remaining. find it funny. No. Yeah, so this is uh, this Navi's is kind of interesting in that sense. Uh, Team Liquid's going to pick up a Darkseer. Are the they... other thing I think Liquid has going for them uh, that Andy mentioned previously, not only are they good at taking down towers, they're really good at controlling the Roshan pit as well. It's so easy just to drop wards and then just have Lycan in the pit, and then you just have everybody Ten else around the guard it. Remaining. I mean, what are you going to do if you're Navi? It's really hard to go into uh, the pit Five like that. Especially remaining. with the Darkseer now as well. Mm -hmm. Like, Think about how you can Tower Siege with that kind of a lineup. You drop a wall, like, Team you can even drop it behind the tower. It doesn't even bend. matter if they walk into it. Because, really, Navi don't have any heroes who are that mobile outside of the Ember Spirit. So he's the only one who can reliably engage past the wall. Everyone else has to pretty much go around it. So you can just drop wards, drop a wall, dead tower. Like, yeah. That's Ten really the concern for Navi. Remaining. So they're going to have to rely pretty heavily on doing well in lanes. Like, everything can be Five changed if your lanes remaining. go more than okay for you, right? Yep. Like, you get a little bit more farm, maybe you get an earlier mech, then all of a sudden the wards Reserve don't seem time. as bad. So for me, Navi right now, are they going to give Ember to Dendi? Are they going to give it to Havos? Are they going to last pick something else? Uh, I think right now, like... They need another ranged hero who can actually attack wards, Navi's and they also need somebody who is not necessarily afraid of taking a little bit of damage, because Liquid are bringing it in uh, pretty large quantities if you take a fight on their terms. Medusa. Maybe we'll see Navi go back to that solo mid Windrunner and get a safe lane Ember. I mean, I, I see Windrunner being able to beat out Storm quite easily. The counter push is there, and we see Navi Dendi the other day farming a quick Hex. Are you sure it's a Storm mid? Because it could be a Lycan mid. It could be. I just storm mid just a little bit more. If they think remaining. Ember is going mid, then I think it's a Lycan mid, okay. like for sure. Because yeah. Lycan, I think, just straight up beats Ember mid. Yeah. And okay. they're like, we're going to get a ranged hero, it's going to be Marana. To so it's likely a Havolsis hero, I think. Yeah, pretty mobile, can transition into some kind of a hard carry. I think he's probably just going to be going for more of like a... You know, we see a lot of the Mjolnir builds lately. Mm -hmm. I think he's probably going to be doing something like that. It's going to be important for Navi to keep their lanes pushed out. And having a hero who can have some kind of nuke potential with Starstorm in conjunction with Telekinesis just to, like, get the wave out. And then you have Ten Spirit Spam as well remaining. from the Elder Titan. I think they have sufficient push to stop Liquid Five from just being able to remaining. throw all three lanes into their tower. Because right now you have a Darkseer in one lane, right? And then you have, like, a Storm and a Shadow Reserve Shaman, time. all mm -hmm. with Spam as well. And then yeah. when they get to a tower, it's really hard to keep it up. So normally when the Mirana is picked, you don't say, oh, this is a lot of stun. But I feel like with this particular lineup, you have Rubik to set it up. Uh, in the mid game, if Elder Titan clumps up or, or stomps against a clump hero, and you were talking about how do you defend against that, that push in the base where they wall behind your tower. I think Ten if you get a pretty good remaining. echo stomp, you follow up with an arrow, and suddenly the game could actually change. You know, follow up with Five the Ice seconds, Blast. Remaining. And the Ice Blast on top. So yeah, there, there, there is a ton of kind of long range initiation. Also, let's not forget that there is shadow so you, you can set up some pretty good ganks against uh, team liquid team liquid's gonna round out their amazing stunner it's gonna be bane do me quick question for you uh mirana versus iris here let's assume it's a solo mirror how yeah. does she do that lane well she traditionally would... like dark series not too good against range carries because mm -hmm. 
you know, right, you, yeah. you don't get harassed too much. I think the lane will be fine until Marana gets phase boots, and then the right. harass really gets hard for Darkseer. Question, what happens if Navi decides to go a little bit crazy and go with a Rubik, Ancient Apparition, Elder Titan, Tri lane, aggressive, and just put the pressure on whatever it is, like the Storm and Light are going to be weak peaks? I think it beats whatever lane Liquid can put together, yeah. actually. That's I think it would just straight up beat the lane, because, like, funny to do so much damage because of the fact that he's going to be able to hit potentially two to three more heroes with the spear and it does give more damage and move speed for a hero rather than just a regular creep and then battle. they can just go ham really and you're going to have touch, chilling on, touch top. on top yeah, yeah and telekinesis so yeah it looks like um that might actually be what they're going to yeah. do so i think a couple days ago we had navi doing something like a roaming carry marana mm -hmm. i didn't even see that game so bruno how did that one work I don't think we'll see it here. But no, it was pretty well. It was pretty good because uh, Hubos actually got like quick level three, where he got two points in, well, one, no, um, level four, quick. Mm -hmm. So he had two points in Starfall, one in Leap and one in Arrow. And then he just gave up the lane to the support. So the supports, there was one support that needed some kind of farm, let's say something like an X. Wasn't an X, but something like an X, mm -hmm. Remain. And he just roamed and killed mid and killed the offlane and killed mid again. I went back to his lane and killed a little bit more. And um, that's the thing about Mirana, she's a carry, not the hard battle, carry, but she also has a lot of nuking potential early game. So you can play her as a roamer, and if you're going to get the kills, one, well, then you're doing a good job. Okay, so it looks like uh, Navi smoke into the enemy jungle trying to pick off one, but uh, Team Liquid not going to fall for it. Funica's I like that they tried that though. Yeah, Yeah. Funic has like no region. What's up with that? He only has one tango. He just, he's not going to get hit ever? Is that his gameplay? Well, I mean, Shadow begins. Shaman is not known necessarily as, like, the best lane support. Although, I suppose with the Lycan Howl, if you do get shackled, I think you just die, mm -hmm. actually. So he, he figures he doesn't need the regen. Well, actually, I think if Shadow Shaman clicks on uh, the Elder Titan and sees that he only has one Tango, I would just spam my Aethershock, my entire mana pool. Yeah. Aethershock, 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 because you don't have a self. Like, that is the best zoning, I think. Obviously, Elder Titan, unlike most other offlane, doesn't really have to get in there. He could just spam his spirit and just get farm. But yeah. Alright. Storm Spirit against Ember Spirit. I think Storm Spirit wins every time, yeah? Yeah, pretty handedly. I mean, it's not terrible for the Ember, but Ember actually doesn't just straight up beat that many heroes mid. I think any hero that does any significant amount of harass damage just by right clicks is going to be hard for Ember because his base armor is pretty bad for an agility hero. And he doesn't really have any method of harass until he gets at least two points in the searing chains. Mm -hmm. Like personally, I wouldn't use level two or uh, yeah, level two because you basically have one slight one chain. I think you want level three or four minimum before you start. But yeah, there he goes. He just does it anyway. But he doesn't have his bottle yet. So I think it's fine because he's going to get his bottle and like three more creeps. So he'll bottle back up to full and then he'll potentially get the two minute rune. Okay. Why did he start with the Slide of Fist first instead of the Searing Chains? Probably just wanted one or two last hit under the tower. You definitely could use it as a last well, hit. Well, it does half damage. It does creeps. like two damage. Yeah, but I, you think know, it's, I think it's more to prevent harass than it is. To like, dodge, dodge uh, remnants and stuff. You know, sometimes like there's one one hit you can't do because your attack animation is so slow. You yeah, slide, I, slide I of Fist it for, for the last hit. But his Slight would actually do like, like 20 damage. Yeah, it wouldn't do much. And the creeps have two armor as well, so it's probably like... <laughs> Well, two armor is what, like 13% damage reduction? Yeah. It's like nothing. Let's see. That's eight. It's that's, even less. One, that's one armor. Oh, one armor, yeah. Okay, so. I think the important thing to point out is that they're doing a very, very good job keeping up Boba on the bot lane. Like, unless he gets level two, or until he gets level two, Boba has to really live in constant fear. And even if he has level two, you could let him surge first and then lift. And that will mostly get the kill. So, Boba, this is a very, very tough lane for him. Looks like Invisoring is going to get picked up by Puppy. Don't think they can actually set up a kill here. Uh, chilling Touch. Yeah, it's got Chilling level Touch. Two chains. If Quickva's not full health, it could be a little bit dangerous for him. Dandy's just full mana as oh, well. Oh, he's got Cold Feet as well. Yeah. I mean, if he chain and body blocks. This is hard though, because there's a lot of creeps here. Well, oh, no. He wants to go for it. It's making it quite obvious though. I don't think Quickva's going to die now. I think he realized, like, just by walking that far forward, that he knows that somebody's there. Because I mean, you don't walk that far up when you have when you don't have creep equilibrium, right? Like, yeah, yeah. When your lane's pushing in, if you walk up like that, it's like okay, there's somebody here. At the same time, if you're a mid player that plays aggressive all the time. Uh, yeah, that... but in that matchup, I don't think. you <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that sentry ward in the jungle? Yeah. Just as uh, 
Oh, well, he's gonna run right in. Here comes the cold feet. The chilling touch is on top. Unfortunately, chain or slide of fist has already been used, so much chasing damage. A little bit of harass. Bit of goof. Dendi is not doing that bad though. Just like the presence of Puppy being around is allowing Dendi to stay consistent uh, in overall CS with Quakefa, which I think is fine. The uh, difference I think between these two heroes is that Quakefa is going to have a bit of an easier time having mid game impact just because of the way that his hero functions. Whereas Dendi, I think, is going to, like, his whole team is basically going to be helping him. Yeah. Whereas Quakefa, I think, has to help make room for his team. I think Puppy is doing an excellent job though. Not only did he, uh, you know, help mid, he also blocked the camp, which is going to make Dark Series life a lot more difficult. Dark Series is already forced to the jungle, but his supports can actually stack for him, so. You know, I think Boba's gonna have a very low impact game, unfortunately for me, because I'm counting him on fantasy points. Demon actually, like, was stacking, and while he was running away to pull the creeps, uh, Poppy, like, lamped the sentry ward in and stopped it. It was pretty funny. Yeah. What a guy. Funnex already got a soul ring, too. I'm, I'm surprised that Team Liquid was able to allow him to do that. He had one tangle. He used the spirit and got, like, a good few. Uh, yeah. Last hits when they pulled. And you can't really stop him from Radiant's pulling the side camp either unless you have a dedicated tower. support just sitting there, yes. just standing in the Dyer's way of the neutrals because the spirit will pull the attack. creeps towards the lane, right? Just like a normal pull. Mm -hmm. So it's actually pretty easy to abuse Elder Titan offlane in terms of experience in gold game. Well, it looks like uh, Team Liquid's actually going to just get mostly the last hits, which is actually a ton of gold here for uh, at least TC. I imagine TC's going to get insanely farmed. Yeah, he actually has flat Dyer's finish four minutes in. That's attack. actually pretty insane. And they can yeah. put a lot of pressure on that tier one. Speaking of tier one, bottom lane is getting pressure. Radiant's and uh, Boba can't be there to defend attack. that, so... Free towers here for uh, Team Navi. I'm really happy that TC is playing Lycan, because he usually plays like the not-so-mobile carries, and Lycan can... Go pretty ham as far as carries go, especially with a team that doesn't have that much lockdown. I'm interested to see if they can actually get this tier one, because even with Howl, since the tier one died so much faster for Navi, they can pretty much just put their two supports up here with Funnik and say, yeah, this is fine. Like Puppy and Kuro can stay nearby or just rotate wherever they want now because that tower is no longer there. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the strengths that killing the offline tower first has always had, just frees up your supports to do pretty much whatever. So the fact that it's died so soon, now it's like Quakefa has to play more passive because he only has vision of the top rune. And just a lot of things can happen basically within every spirit as well. Who's going this build? It's attack. very strange that no one's rotating bottom from Liquid to like soak up all this experience. Because they know... Well, well they Dark Seer is now going there slowly. The problem is that normally when you're pushing a tier 1 tower, like, you have a melee carry being left behind, like an anti-mage or a PL or whatever, but Murano with phase boots, he could, or she Dyer's could definitely zone out uh, Boba. Attack. I think Boba, if he's not careful enough, he's gonna get killed. Mid lane here, here comes the lift as well as the chain against Koifa. Koifa just lifts out, but then he was Bottom able to get the kill, I think, through the second proc of that chain? Searing chains, yeah. yeah. That damage. And yeah, first blood for Dendi. The Dendi's level 7 as well. as well. Cheeky ninja. That's what you did in there, won't be one. You're scouting runes of feckin' chickens. I mean, you say it like it's a bad thing to do. I thought we were gentlemen here. What? <laughs> man, I'm getting, going for the Play w, to win, man. man. Play to win. <laughs> yeah. Leap here on the bot lane. It's gonna be chain slowing down Boba. Boba is gonna take a double star storm proc. Yep. Easy kill. And that's exactly what I mean about Murana. Once she gets a face boots, her damage actually just goes up the roof. Thanks you. Interesting build coming out from Murana, though. Of, uh, Not that interesting. I mean, I think you should max Star Storm by 7, to be honest. Well, I think if you have Searing Chain set up, it's pretty reliable that you're going to be able to get an arrow. I mean, Searing Chains is 3 seconds, so if you can't land an arrow in 3 seconds, that arrow is not landing, you know what I mean? So, I think that it's actually fine. The double Star Storm is one question that you could kind of raise and say, okay, yeah, the double Star Storm would actually just flat out deal more damage. Mm -hmm. But do you really want to be that close to Liquid Steam? Well, I think more so oh, for the laning, like, we saw him leap in, double star storm is guaranteed almost, and then you just right click him down to death, but yeah, eventually, Murana's definitely gonna have both spell of max, so it's, you know, not, not too big a deal. Liquid Koifa running in. So close. The invis re reveals from Kuroki. Got Sage's mask on top of Vlad's. I guess he's getting medallion. Yeah, Medallion's really legit when you're trying to kill Roshan pretty early on into the game. It's, it gives you lots of damage against people as well, like it's kind of... Yeah, minus armor is ridiculous early game. And they definitely need to actually kill that Roshan, because if you look at tower, uh, even though there was a 4 minute Vlad, they didn't get anything beyond that, so... 
are pretty much defended. Funny getting a lot of experience for an offlane. Wolf has got a DD. Yeah, but can he actually do anything with it is the question. I'm surprised he, well, Dyer's middle I thought he could have gone Kuroki, but, you know, Dendi is nearby. There is Lyft as a defensive measure. I didn't really think about this before, but if you kill the offlane tower and the mid on the opposite team is basically the space creator and that tower is already dead, you have a way harder time ganking lanes because yeah. if supports are consistently moving around, you never really know exactly where everybody is. Mm -hmm. So as a hero like Storm, who's either an initiator or like a I'm going to pick you off type of hero, it's way harder to do Dyer's your job if the offlane tier one tower attack. dies that fast. Because all of a sudden you have to worry about two heroes that you're trying to go into or three instead of just one. And Kuro also manages to get his hands on Ball Lightning, so now matters are even worse because he can just do this, go in Telekinesis, they're going to go for the burst, and he's going to throw all three spirits out immediately. The arrow, unfortunately, going to be off the mark, and Quakeful will manage to live through it. TP coming in. It's going to be Bulba. It's not really going to be able to kill anyone, but still. It's also pretty hard when they have no... Ooh, they got a Hex on Dendi, War Trap coming in, but there's no enough mana for Shaco, or at least a little bit out of range. That's at least... Okay, deep. Okay. The more important thing is that right now it's basically 300 gold given up for that misplay. Yeah, and now Havos is just farming the words, man. He's like, thanks for the money, man. No TC's actually going to stray and go in the Roshan pit. <laughs> I but guess. There's no vision on the map at all from anyone. Those are zoning wards, man. Yeah, I, I suppose. Keep Havos busy. Pretty expensive zoning ward, though. Yeah, I mean, he's actually going to farm every single one of them, so that's oh, quite a bit of money. He left two. So, uh, keep the change. <laughs> it was a bait, animal. man. It was a bait. Yeah, I think what they need to do is give Boba and TC all of this experience. Boba needs to catch up. He's got boots and silver, and that's it. Yeah, he is leeching it, though, so... Yeah. Oh. It's actually quite good for Liquid right. that the Shadow Shaman has already managed to hit level 6. I mean, granted, he did waste his wards, but it wasn't a waste in the sense that it stopped Na'Vi from just being in the vicinity. Yeah. Like, sure, Havos, like, lost, what, 50% of his life just killing the wards? Mm -hmm. So he can't go in. Funix, obviously, in the offlane, and even if he TPs, it's going to be really obvious that TC can just walk away. So to get Roshan, which is definitely something to Liquid's credit, I just feel as though Quakefa is just having such a hard time in this game. Like, there's nowhere really for him to go reliably unless he has, like, four or, like, three members of his team behind him. And Kuroki and Puppy are kind of nearly always off the map, which kind of scares the crap out of you if you're trying to farm as well. It looks like we're going to see a smoke gun coming out from Team Liquid on the bottom. They're going to have way too lead a charge. He's going to have the most reliable initiation. Well, maybe you want to have your Hexer in the front, but Shadow Shaman is so slow. I think Navi's actually aware of this, though. Kuroki's standing behind the trees of this Tier 1. I think Fiend's grip is longer than Hex. Yeah, Fiend's grip, well... You have been denied. Not I've seen like 1200 range yeah. Fiend's Grip, so they're going to spot out Dendi. Are they going to be able to get the grip in time? That's what I'm talking about, that 1000 range. Here comes the fall in from Kuro, he has it stolen. Still, he's going to be able to stop the grip. Puppy, though, going to get Bursa down. Wards drop behind the tower. Kuro getting shackled on the right-hand side of the tower. Dendi, though, doing damage with the Spirits. Manages to get a kill. Quick in the meantime, picks up the double, taking out Kuro. Teleport reaction now from Funic. He's going to throw out his Spirit. Is it actually fast enough to catch TC? I believe he still has the Aegis. No, he wants way too. It's so close. I don't actually think He's going to be able to get him. Aegis going to be popped now on TC. Arrow going to be off the mark on Koifa. He balls to the low ground. Dendi just on the chase. Does not want to give up. Has another chase if he wants to use it. TC and Bulba in the back. Doing a bit of damage to fun at Koifa. Now completely out of mana. Havos quite low as well. This is just the most insane drawn out team fight. Dendi gets another kill. Now Havos on the run from some wolves. TC now wants to leave. And I think Dendi is going to find yet another kill. It's going to be on way too. He's got his spirit up, but he has no TP and no mana. Is he going to be able to get away from this one? I, don't I doubt it. Yeah, he's going to have Medallion he's back up. Fine. He's actually pretty yeah. fast here with the drums as well as face. And yeah, they're going to give up the chase. And he gets a regen. There's Surge <laughs> back on. I'm surprised they gave it up. Oh my god, he really is going to get a regen. I mean, that team fight really showcased the fact that there's oh, that's oh, so ice blast. demoralizing. Coming to the bot lane. I think they're going to go on him. If TC he stays despite being hit. No, he's gonna back off. Yeah, that team fight really showcased that one of the spirits is able to fight with low mana, and the other spirit is just useless yeah. without mana. It was also Kuroki uh, all lagging in and stopping the field group so early denied. and stealing it as well. Like having that stolen still makes it so hard for Wei to do his job. Yeah, right? and that's another point that we didn't really bring up before: is there are two heroes on Liquid that, in order to disable, they have to basically be standing still. So that's really easy to line up arrows if you're Havost. It's really easy to be able to telekinesis or steal the spells in general, like being able to steal Fiend's Grip. Bot lane. 
if you want Dendi, but there's no stuns whatsoever, so they're yeah, not they, getting they combo. Really can't. They are gonna start a grip here on Funnick. They do have the first time to actually bring him down. Ice Blast is Dendi's coming out, and so will Dendi. Dendi, is he gonna go in? He sees Koi's Father. It's a two-man stun. Way too is basically dead. Drum's gonna get activated. He's not gonna chase for more. The Koi Father's quite low as well. Yeah, but the Ice Blast effect finally wore off, so he's not gonna be able to get that kill even if he wanted to dive, and Demon's sitting here mid. And they denied the mid tower, so those wards that were dropped earlier, kind of like the the zoning wards, I guess you could say. Yeah. Didn't really get quite what they wanted to. I'm, I mean, the tower Radiant's going down is still good. TC in the meantime fallen. manages to secure the uh, safe lane tier one, but the map control I think is more important, right? Like denying yeah. the tower is fine if you're Navi. It's just gold that Liquid otherwise would have gotten anyway. Just being able to get the map control though, I think, is what Liquid really needs. Brokey's loving this ball lightning right now. Yeah, he, he re-steals it to make sure that he has it again. I'm really Dyer's surprised. Normally Storms who play against attack. Rubik just spam remnants, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they'll farm the woods or something, or they'll just ball and just remnant out of habit. Because you can't steal at mid-ball because you can't be targeted. Yeah. So I'm just surprised that he's actually allowed it to happen so many times. Definitely not good for Liquid. Giving the remnant away. And every time Daya's we see Kuroki Remnant, there's just like attack. red dots. Red everywhere. X's everywhere? Yeah, yeah how, that's really weird. Oh, fighting time. Oh, Arrow gonna follow up. Mech gonna be used. Bulba though, gonna get Bursa down. Ice Blast is gonna hit on two. Demon gonna be the next to drop for the cold feet, but deeper. Then he actually picks up a double somehow. How did he get both of those kills? The Flame Guard is level 3. He's yeah. level 11. He had chain on both of those heroes, Daya's so I guess that damage. No, the chain here on the I creep. thought the cold feet for sure was gonna get the kill. Okay. Or one of the kills, but I guess not. Then he just manages to get them both. Yeah, they really need uh, their Lycan to be in these fights. Unfortunately, he was farming in the jungle. Here comes the tier one push. That should be free as well. The chilling touch with slot of this combo is pretty Daya's filthy as well. Tower has fallen. Like you always get that bonus damage, and it only uses one charge of it as well. I think it's pretty good, but I don't think it's as good as people hype it up to be. Because, I mean, it's only really good if you have multiple sources of damage going on one target, right? Like okay. you think Meepo with yeah. Chilling Touch because it's like five or four Meepos hitting the same guy. Then it's good. But if it's just one cold feed hit on a bunch of different heroes, it's actually like, it's still a decent amount of damage to the whole team. But what, Allies. it's like 80 more? Yeah. You can stack uh, camps with it and kill neutrals with it, though, which is pretty yeah, hard with like a battle for you to kill them, remember? What if yeah, they're... that's true. And it only counts as one hit. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so I guess it is quite good. Close. He's invisible, man. He smells blue. He wants the arrow. Like, he's gonna just go in. The, okay. The ulti wears off, so he's gonna get Dyer's spotted out. Top tower Took his camp, attack. though. Yeah, bit of farm. Thanks for the gold. What a, sometimes when I'm in the enemy jungle, I uh, like kill the big creeps and leave the small ones. <laughs> do you think that's a, a decent thing to do? or? Yeah, it is, definitely. Because... You're basically saying you have to spend your time to kill a creep that's worth at most, like, Dyer's what, most, like, 25 gold, right? Sometimes the big ones are, like, 30 or 40. Well, the Ursas, I think, are. But if you just leave, like, a mini centaur or something, then it's pretty annoying. Oh, they tried a tier 1 for a tier 2. I'm surprised, actually, that Demon dropped his wards for this. They could have gone high ground, do you think? I mean, maybe not, but you could save it for I think they could have, actually. Yeah. Because if you're not V, you don't want to fight with mass servant wards down, and you're already like three or four people top. So if you just TP without getting the tower, it's more like Dyer's you're wasting your time. Because exactly. they could very easily just drop the wards when you TP in. Yeah, they're going to be able to find the both. He might be able to lose away from this. Nope. Teleport hex coming in from Demon Dendi. He's going to go in for Demon. He wants the kill. Will be able to find it. Koifa almost completely out of mana again. And Dendi, instead of going for the uh, typical BKB, is actually just opting to go for a Deso. So maybe feels he doesn't need a match community. Dendi's still up here. Ice Blast again head on Koifa. Does he want to go deep? Looks like he doesn't, which is good because way too head grip. That would have been a really sad ember. <laughs> Mid lane, looks like they are going to spot out Kuroki. Kuroki can he's steal Shapeshift and just run. Yeah, go, it's going to do go. it right there, so Kuroki is going to play Daya's with these two. Under yeah. Attack. Huh. Neither to how. Yeah, how. Had how. Oh, it would have been hilarious if they were chasing each other around for a while. I've actually seen that happen way too many times. <laughs> I'll catch it. No, I'll catch you. Like the mini wolf. I mean, you're so used to like, oh, I'm I'm shape shift. I'm gonna just right click anybody down. Yeah. Except when they're searched. I gotta say though, Navi are being very proactive about just applying pressure everywhere. Just having Dendi so far ahead helps them significantly because he's actually almost guaranteed killing supports now. Mm -hmm. And once he finishes his Desolator, it's gonna get even worse. Since he doesn't have to fully commit to a fight right now, he can just use Sleight of Fist with a Deso at like 
probably 18, 19 minutes in. Mm -hmm. I mean, Shadow Shaman and Bane, they're not going to be able to really deal with that kind of damage. And then you have an Ice Blast to follow it up. Denied. There's just so much AoE that they have to deal with that the supports just can't stay in the fight. And the natural order, removing all their armor as well. Yeah. So, so it's even negative armor on top of that. Like the way that they're dealing with this, the push potential of Liquid is just stopping it before it can even start. Mm -hmm. I think what Liquid needs to do is just keep farming to their Orchids and then just have the Storm to pick off Mirana or basically just about anybody else. Um, maybe they can't kill the Elder Titan because he's got the mech. But I think everybody else, uh, quite fucking solo. So. What is Demon up to here? Demon is stacking the camp by using Mass Serpent Wards to farm it. They do use splash damage. So and it's not the best use of the wards, but it's actually not too bad. I've well, actually experimented using level 11 wards and just stacking a four stack ancients. It'll take you a while. But oh, Demon, no! The messenger. Oh my god. Oh boy. So that's how you not do this. But uh, uh, if you do want to use your level 11 Mass Serpent wards for three four stack ancients, it's, it's okay. He got the blink dagger though, so it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I think the blink is actually pretty huge. Like, yeah. granted, probably shouldn't die to neutrals. He didn't really lose any money, I guess. So it doesn't matter that much. But hey, he's, he's, free trip to the base, right? I don't know if he did it on purpose, but we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He did not do it on purpose. I mean, there was a dragon inside. Yeah, yeah, Dyer's no. middle tower is under <laughs> It's alright, man. It's alright. It's fine. But now that he has Blink, if he can manage to catch out Dendi, just having, like, the one hero go in first allows Quakefit to go in. And then if you can even just go for a Hex maybe on Kuro instead, that way you know there's no like, Telekinesis going out onto your Storm when he balls yeah. into the Ember. So there's basically two targets I think that Demon could go for. Either one I think attack. is perfectly viable. My, my biggest concern, though, is that Liquid basically have to get, kill a hero extremely fast. Because if they don't, they're going to have to deal with Ice Blast, they're going to have to deal with Dendi throwing out a Sleight of Fist or Flame Guard damage. There's actually a lot of, like, spammy abilities that Navi have yeah. that you really oh. don't want to have to deal Kodaya's with. Tower yeah, he's not going to defend. Attack. This tower is going to be given up. Meanwhile, it looks like it's going to be Team Liquid trying to threaten the racks on the Dyer's bottom lane. Middle tower they don't fallen. have the Master Serpent Ward here, so it's basically they're just pushing for space. I'm not sure if I understand this move. Well, I think the push from Liquid is fine, because the way... The way that you stop Radiance Navi is being is at their base attack. before they're at your base. Yeah. And they don't know where Demon is. Like, Demon's been out of sight, so they don't actually know if Demon was down here or not. Maybe they can assume well, that he was going to be, be sitting here. towards middle. Mm -hmm. My Shadow going to walk past those wards. Sentry's going to get dropped down, so they should see Kuroki running by. Oh, they didn't see it. Okay, they see them now. They see them now. Yeah. Everybody's going to be able to regroup just fine. They're kind of split up, though, Liquid. Yeah, they're actually cut in yeah. half, basically. I mean, Way2 and TC are bottom, which I think is fine, because all the wards, actually, from Liquid are aggressive wards, so they can see the entirety of Navi's jungle. So they're going to know, basically, as soon as they come across the map. And since there's sentries, basically, in the one spot that you would essentially have to walk through, unless you're teleporting back to the base, which even then, like, they're still positioned to walk for. I mean, Demon's actually just drawing a lot of attention up top, so the wolves are slowly pushing on the bottom. Yeah, but I think they saw terror. him. He's so... he's gonna die. He's got Blink! That terror might die, though. It's that like... ward saw him, so if he gets Sleight of Fisted, he's dead. Oh. Unless he can get, like, a Hex off. Oh, never mind. He sees Dendi, so Demon's gonna... gonna blink gonna... and just go for the wards and straight up TP. Can he actually make it out? He will make it out. That's two, three... T Everybody's wrong. So, Roshan's happening right now. Yeah. That was you know actually really good. Yeah, that was, was a really good play. I mean, sure, they farm the wards, but... I mean, Liquid get Roshan now for free. Yeah. <laughs> Demon Honestly, I think Liquid was going to get the Roshan the regardless. But, well, uh, maybe. I think the way that Navi was positioned, it would have actually been relatively difficult for Liquid to fight it. Mine. But they're going to give the Aegis to Quake Fun instead, which I think is the right call yeah. in this case. You've got to give your Aegis to your Initiator, because Storm, in my opinion, is like one of the best Aegis carriers in the game. Just period. Yeah. Because you can get in and out of fights so effectively with that hero. He also uses both his mana and HP like really quickly, whereas like yeah. a, a lot of heroes don't benefit from full mana as much as he would. Don't give an Aegis to a Wraith King with like a full inventory, man. I hate that. Like he just dies like two times and it's yeah. like, okay, now what? Well, the problem actually is that your whole team dies. Oh, yeah, exactly. Die. You're just standing there and you're all oh, puppy. Orchid. There's a... Man, those poles are so weird. Like, he just got pulled from what, like 500 range? <laughs> I thought how it works is, like, if that hero's ever in range, when you catch a pull and when they walks out, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the same with Fiend. Oh, Dendi, he's gonna get crit. He's gonna be forced to go to his remnant. The damage they actually managed to kill TC. Does he have another remnant down so he can TP back? I think he kind of got baited by doing a lot of damage to Dendi there. I think he felt a little bit greedy attack. and then wanted to go for the kill. 
He's a wolf. He could probably take the blood. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, tower top is gonna get denied, I think. The range creep. Go on, range creep. Nah, not enough oh. damage. It hits for four, man. Four damage. Piercing. Not good against fortified, man. Come on, let me. I don't know this. if I don't know if the Warcraft three thing. So... No, it is. Ooh. It's in the game. That's what it's based off of. It's in the game. Phoenix down for Ghost Scepter. It's really good against the uh, Liquid, actually, because they have like Shadow Jam wards, like in yeah. Storm Spirit does a lot of right click damage as well. I think Phonix is actually relatively safe, though, in this lineup. I think he's one of the lowest priority targets. Because killing the Elder Titan is nice, but he's actually pretty tanky as a hero. I am, I'm, I don't like the Ghost Scepter. Like, with the mech alone, I think he's going to be fine. You, you just don't think he's going to be targeted that much? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's mostly going to stay back with his range, right? Yeah. So. Well, he has to get in to heal everyone now. No, it's 750 AOE, man. I think it's more that in a lot of lineups, Elder Titan is definitely somebody that you want to kill early, but you just can't afford to focus him because he's extremely fast. And if you focus him, then you have Ember, like Dendi and Havos just running rampant in a team fight, right? Yep. Mm. And I mean, killing the AA or the Rubik is nice, but Puppy is probably going to get his ult off no matter what. And the same thing can be said for Kuro. Like, he's going to use his spells. If you're Liquid here, what do you do with his Aegis? What's like push a terror? Go high ground? I would try to go for a tier 2, or maybe just even finish the tier 1 in the offlane. Or is it actually getting denied right now? No, it's not. No. It's still out of range. Okay, Seven so, more life. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess Liquid either want to farm it out a little bit more, maybe wait for TC to get his BKB. Oh, TC's back during his tier 1. Yeah. They should be able to at least put it in deny range, or just flat out kill it. The Necro Creep's doing a lot of damage right now. Oh, oh wow, he actually gets it. Yeah. Has nice. Oh, Necro, no joke. Oh, that damage. It's so scary when you're an agility carry and you kill the Necro Creeps. They do so much damage. Yeah, so they only have three minutes left on Aegis. If they were going to go for a tier two, I would say do it now. Well, they have to wait for Necro Books to come back up, so I think they might use that on the last like, 30 seconds. They got before. wards, though. Like Serpent wards. I, I guess. Maybe they're Is just waiting for a yet? pick. Nope, he's 10. All right, so he's not 11. Even though he did suck Ancients. I mean, he was playing hard support, right? Or no, I think he plays four. Yeah, yeah way four, two. Yeah. And way two plays five. Oh yeah, way two's <laughs> definitely five. The boots. But way two's got blink as well. If you look at him, two dogs and gold and bank. Maybe it's actually not too bad. Is he, he going for a necro book? Maybe instead. Oh, Ooh, the hex! What, what the heck? heck? I don't. I don't know. That, that hex a... range. I didn't know chickens could fly. Apparently, they can. Now in Dota 2, flying chickens. I mean, Mirana used to be that when you're leaping, you're invulnerable. Yeah. But they changed that like a while back. So you could actually hit somebody when they're the leaping. So. Yeah, you, you're, you're, your leap can actually just get interrupted. Yeah. Like if you get stunned or something. Slark. Oh, yeah. oh my god. That's like the worst feeling in the world. It you really just get is. pounced and you're like, uh, yeah. shot? I'm over here. Oh, if that slight of fist hit, that would have been ages. He's just gonna go for it. Yeah. Oh. Wow, that freaking Why didn't he just use all of his mana to get out? He was buying his BKB. Got him. Got the BKB. Well, I mean, his Aegis is gonna be going down anyway. Realistically, that Aegis wasn't gonna be put to use, so I don't think Quakefit really cares. Yeah. Quakefit doesn't double, care. Double, double. I think that Navi wanna get the next Roshan, though, because that's gonna be cheese. Mm -hmm. And if they give that away as well, it's just like letting Liquid stay in the game longer, in my opinion. I think if they got next Roshan, they could potentially just go high ground. Oh, sure, it's going to be tough. Oh, they're going to go in for Dendi. BKB can be popped. Dendi can be going down here. Quite low on HP. We'll go down. That's 1,100 gold to Quick, but he wants more. He's going for Puppy. He's going to get more auto attacks off. He needs to get one more to kill him, but no Puppy goes in. And they're going to find Kuroki as well. Two really big kills here for Liquid. Quick, but does not... Doesn't care, man. That was awesome. Does, does not care. I was just gonna say that I, I wasn't impressed with the way that Liquid used their Aegis. They had a, such a good advantage, but they didn't press it for anything. I think they were waiting for a mistake, but it seems like Koifa is just waiting for that BKP because he re recognized once he has it, nothing could actually stop him from just going in like he just did. You see the weakness of Ember Spirit. If he gets silenced, he's just like... <laughs> well, at the same time, Vanek was close enough to drop his mech, but I think it came right after after Dendi died. If the mech came off, Dendi would have survived. So that, that play that Koifun made would not have worked. Well, I it don't... might not have killed Dendi, but he wouldn't have died either. 
Like, actually, even with Mech, I think he still would have killed yeah. him. No, no, he definitely would have killed uh, Dendi, but he would have taken him much longer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. The Orchid hadn't popped when he died as well, though. That 30% damage or whatever. Yeah, it was close, I think. I don't know if it actually killed him or if it hadn't gone off and it would have killed him anyway. Quaker's gonna find a haste rune. He's like the shining hope right now besides TC of Liquid. And if you look at the cores, like an overall net worth, it's like Lycan and Storm are second and third highest. So it's not like they're getting massively out farmed. It's more just like Navi have been applying a lot of pressure and Liquid haven't had the majority of map control, I would say, for a little while. But they're still finding room. So it's not as if Liquid are out of the game. They just need to make sure that they, like once Demon hits maybe 11, Maybe they can start trying to go for the tier twos. He's only like 1.9k away from Agonins as a demon. He is really rich. Yeah. Even though he's 0, 4, 5. I actually think at this point Liquid are more effectively utilizing the map than Navi are. Like just in terms of the heroes that are finding the farm. <laughs> because you have three people who are more or less even, or three pairs of people I should say. Like TC and Havost, pretty darn even on farm. And then you have Dendi and Quaikfa. Quaikfa is slightly ahead. And then you have um, the Darkseer and Funic, and Bulba is ahead of Funic. So, if you think about it, everyone's counterpart in Liquid, basically outside of one, they're all ahead. Yeah. Two, two Roshan kills, man. Yep, two Roshan. It's gonna be three soon. It's gonna be respawning pretty darn quick, I think. Do you yeah, think we, Dendi we, should go for a BKB? Sorry to interrupt, Lumi. No, no problem. Uh, we see a couple crits coming out, which, just wanna mention it. Uh, the walls does make illusions that do crit. But it's so poor stats. Yeah, like, it's it's not gonna kill anybody. Yeah. But it is a nice bit of extra damage, I suppose. I was actually a bit surprised that Danny didn't go for the BKB because looking at Liquid. That's what I'm thinking as for well. For the same reason that Koifa doesn't want to ball in against that team necessarily. Oh, oh. they're gonna spot out Dendi. Although he does have backup this time. Demon's gonna go ahead and blink away. Doesn't want to commit. Where's the party? They're missing TC though, so I don't know if Liquid really want to do this. Maybe they just want to bait out the fight so TC can get the tier 2 top. Maybe no, they're just they pushing decide. for space. They, they want to force somebody TP top or something and then they go for Roshan. It is spawning very, very soon now. There's been a lot of times in this game when there's no ward coverage at all. Well, what's that about? Well, one team has a book 3. Yeah. So it's pretty common that things would be dewarded. And I don't think Liquid want to place defensive wards because in a lot of games, having aggressive wards is better for teams that want to consistently push because you want to see them coming before they get there. Oh, and Funic has a gem as well. Yeah. And they, so there's a lot of ways to deward basically from both teams. Yeah. Everybody's running to defend bot. Top is going to actually just get killed by these Necro Radiance and how. Nice mm, Blast going to slow things down a little bit. I think the tower is going to go down regardless. Roshan. That damage, man. They're gonna glyph. Yep. Radiance top tower is under attack. Tower is under the one Whoa. nice thing about this, or one Radiance thing that could have been nice, good deny by Dendi, by the way, is if Roshan had spawned during the time, like after Dendi TP'd, then maybe Liquid could have gotten their third Rosh. And with a cheese, like Quickfoot with a nine second BKB and a cheese, and maybe even an Aegis, if they like really wanted to stack him, would be ridiculously hard for Navi to deal with. Yep. And I think being able to get picks like that, you either force buybacks at a Na'Vi, or you just flat out go high ground with Mass Serpent Wards. If you're in that situation and he has a Cheese and an Aegis, do you even uh, Fiend's Grip as Bane? Because you know it's going to get stolen, and like, obviously, Storm Spirit is, Koifa is that best target to use it on if he's BKB. You mean... If he has a Cheese and a BKB on, does but Bane... But is on Liquid's team. Yeah, yeah, but they have a Rubik. Oh, Liquid, or Koifa, excuse me, getting caught Ooh. out, extremely low, gonna ball away. Not going to be able to burn the Aegis. Yeah. But that's huge though. I think forcing the Storm back like that, you could push your at least one or two wave back and yeah. start to contest Roshan. So even though they didn't get the kill, I think that was actually a big map advantage. So Shane, you were saying if Kuro manages to steal grip, who does he grip? No, do you even grip as way to, like with the risk of lo losing it? I think you still grip. Like, yeah, you have to. Yeah. You, you okay. can't not grip. I mean, the thing is, you either wait for Kuro to steal a spell, because maybe he steals Ball from Quakefa instead, and then or maybe he steals, like, Mass Serpent Wards. Because for him, there's, like, three or four things that you would ideally want to steal. I would actually say that, in some cases, Fiend's Grip is probably low on his priority. I think Mass Serpent Wards are arguably better to steal for him. Okay. Sure, Grip is okay, because it's the easy go-to steal. It's like, yeah, sure, I can get this. I would actually prefer Hex over, Mass uh, over Grip, if I could get to pick. Yeah. But that's spell. really hard to steal. Yeah. Shadows, Shadows. It's like, it's it's Navi that gets some map advantage. There is one wolf inside the pit, but there's also at the same time a gem. They gotta recognize that Roshan is not happening though. I don't know, I think they could do it. 
it's risky, but they could do it. Because, I mean, Daedalus and Manta on uh, both ends. The wolf scouts it, so it has to be a rapid response. They're not going back for it, so they're going for a top. It's going to die quite fast. I mean, they're not going to get top either. This kind of hurts Liquid, though, because Dyer's I think not having an Aegis or Cheese attack. for the next push means that Navi are going to have base defense advantage, and sooner or later, Denny's going to get to the point where he has so many damage items that they're just not going to be able to deal with a slight of fist spam. Yeah. And then the game gets really hard for Liquid, so... I mean, Basically, Liquid needs to win right now. Well, Dendi doesn't have a TP scroll. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Oh. I mean, his TP canceled. Um, that cancel TP is actually bad. Okay, Ice Blast is going to come in, though. Radiant's top tower I don't know if they have Blitz. The Ice Blast is going to hit first person. It's going to be Curl. They want to try to go for him. He's going to get Orchid. Ghost Scepter's still on. Woo! They're just going to get the Melee Rex free. Here comes the Slight of Fist. Earth Splitter's going to be there as well. Hits on TC, but he's still got his ult on. Radiant's Arrow's going to be dodged. Here comes Dendi. He goes on another Slight of Fist. Koikva quite low, but not going to be able to drop any huge wall by Boba. Actually, Gets a vacuum on three. He's the only one back here though. Cheese, Popeye, Havos, now Koikva, extremely low. Punch in the face by the staple gun by Funnick. Gonna get the kill on Koikva. Now Havost looking for Boba as well. Alrighty then. They just get a free Rax. Yeah. It seemed like a very, very bad engagement until you realized TP got cancelled. Dendi didn't have TP. Ice Blast Well, he intentionally cancels it. Well, I mean, did you want to TP into that? Because there, there yeah. is Blink Hex and Blink Fing script. And, uh, you know, Boba being able to run interference to make sure that the carries come out alive, or at least TC does. That's huge. Like though. I said, I think they needed to win right there. And when I say win, I don't mean win the game, but, like, get some something big. Because you gave That's up Aegis and Cheese, yeah. So, speaking of Aegis and Cheese, there is still Aegis on Dendi, who was already hitting very hard. I think in that team fight, even though Liquid won that or engagement and got the Raxus, they are. They now know that they can't actually fight heads up. They will just lose the fight, unless you know Navi loses one or two heroes right from the get go. I don't think TC and uh, Storm will be enough. That was really good awareness because they saw them with this ward. They saw them all oh, running. Dead. If they get a puppy right now, blink He's hex. Still alone. Blink hex. No, he blinks away. That was really weird. They saw the spirit mid. They knew Funic was there. I'm actually surprised they didn't go for that. Hmm. See. In my pub game, I wouldn't even see anything else. I would just see the target. You would just see the I kill. I would just get the kill. I would have won the game right there, man. Kill secured. Well, I don't know if killing puppy Thanks. necessarily means second lane of high ground. No, no, it won't. But it, it's a nice, I mean, it's AI plus. Yeah, it's pretty big. So Dendi wants blood. Certainly does. And he's got a BKB now, so. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't think he'll use it for his he's first gonna fight. He's going to run into TP. Uh-oh. You can't man fight a Lycan, buddy. He's gonna hurt you oh, bad. No. Okay, BTP. Right, fair enough. Yeah. Do you think he needed to be there? I thought, I thought he could just run away. Well, he didn't have vision of anything else. Like, he actually has no wards in the map at all. So, I mean, in that circumstance, you just play it safe. Yeah. You just say, okay, well, I could potentially get arrowed or I could get blink lifted or something, but. Wait, does Kerr even have a blink? I don't even know if he does. Nope, nope he doesn't. Dyer's Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Looks like Liquid. <coughs> Hex now and Quakefield as well. Oh man, Liquid are actually in a really good position for this. Yeah. The only person they're missing Radiant's is Demon, but they have two Necro books now. Attack. And they have Lycan Howl, so they can just massacre this tier too. Yeah, there's and a spirit in the middle lane though, but you can see that they're waiting for that spirit to come back in. They're I don't think Na'Vi can afford to glyph this. They have to glyph their base, I think. Yeah, we saw earlier, I think they used a glyph for a tier Radiant's 2 or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And Force is denied, yeah. and they, did, yeah. they, they just lost the Rax because they glyphed it. Now, Hex is also up on Stormster. I think this game is anybody's game, right? Yeah, I think, actually, it's about one of the more even games we've seen. Mm -hmm. Scary thing for Na'Vi is if Liquid get to your base. Because even with Sleight of Fist, sure, it's going to do really good damage to the supports, but you're going to have to worry about Mass Serpent Wards, two books, and Wall. you're going to have Howl. Ag Agonim's Mass Serpent yeah, Wards. Yeah, Agonim's okay. Serpent Wards, so that's, like, even worse. Shane and, and I seen this before. Wait a minute. Yes, then he did. just spent all of his money. I mean, yeah, he has an Aegis still, but it's not going to be around for that much longer. Did he buy the Daedalus? He bought bots. He bought bots. Because he okay. needs room for a TP, basically. Yeah. Or a spot that has a TP. Okay. I mean, I get why he buys it, but it's still dangerous. Maybe he believes that he's not going to die. I think that's obviously it. I mean, that's what you got to believe, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. He, he has, has Aegis. Thinking that you're not going to die. So he, ha he has the one, the one death. Moonlight Shadow being used in the mid lane, but spotted out by Team Liquid. Immediate uh, back in the base. This. Oh, I think Demon can go for this. Just put put the pressure on with the wards. I mean, pressure what? Mid. Well, if you buildings? push the lane and if you, you push, push the lane in through top, yeah, you yeah. can still drop the wards on mid. And it'll kill the terror. It's Yeah, he's going for it. Blink at their shock. 
Dyer's middle tower. Demon Dota Man teleport in. It's gonna be Puppy. He's the only one TPing back though. This is so Risky. aggressive. He's gonna go in for a massive reward. Here we go. Yeah, he's gonna get Puppy dead. He's gonna oh get frozen God. though, so he's dead. Tier 4 seeking some damage. Meanwhile, if you're Navi, you say no massive rewards for the siege, but they gotta defend. Where's the TP coming out? Well, at least they have bots. The wards gonna get farmed. Kill the hots. Killing the tier fours is actually pretty good though. Yeah. Like, if you can get the damage dealt to those, that means there's nothing in the base outside of just creep spawns that are going to defend. What's and uh, like after a while, like a couple minutes, your base is just going to get eaten alive you by creeps. It down. I mean, it give, definitely opens uh, the route for backdoor for Lycan. Lycan definitely one of the fastest backdoor there is. I don't know, man. This game is weird. It it's just goes to show though. you, like, some lineups have this. At any point in the game, they can just rax you. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's the kind of lineup that Lick would have. It was like back in the day when people picked Lone Druid, like, every single game. And the lineup would look like it was really far behind, and then suddenly they would get to the base, and it's just like they rax you in, like, four seconds. It's like, okay. Like, with Lone Tiny Druid is a well. hero. Yeah. Same thing. I think that's what they're playing for. Like, they're just going for the very, very safe, but oh. kind of, like, Oof. backdoorish play. Remember when Puppy was on the bottom lane and he was there by himself? They didn't go for the picks. It yeah. seems like all they're going for is just this kind of rat dota push all lanes, slowly whittle you down. Because they have the map control, and, and essentially with how fast they push and, push and how mobile their heroes are, if they could secure the fourth Roshan, that could be a good way to play the game. And Liquid have managed to keep their side advantage, I guess you would call it, by just making sure they've gotten Roshan twice. And we argued kind of that it was bad for Liquid to give away the third Roshan, they but got in a reality, out of it, yeah, yeah they, they actually took an advantage from something that could be construed as a bad thing. So I think that they've actually played it relatively well. I mean, considering the fact that in the early game, Na'Vi had a, a I would say, a, not a sizable lead, but they were ahead in terms of map control. They had a slightly more experience in gold, and they were managing to basically force most of the engagements. But now, in my opinion, the shoe's on the other foot, and it's like Navi are basically reacting to the tempo that Liquid are placing, so. How do you change that? Like, what do you what do you do to change the tempo of the game? I think you need pickoffs. You oh. need to push the lanes out first. That's like, true. A pickoff is good, but what good does a pickoff do you if your lanes are right outside of your base? It's like you can't really force anything out of that. You have to make sure that you have, like, one hero dedicated in each lane. All three of the heroes basically need to be almost ungankable, which is hard to do because not all your heroes have escapes. Yeah. You basically have Marana and Ember, are two heroes who can go to a lane and say, okay, reliably, Priest. I won't die. I mean, even at that, though, there is a Storm on the other side with a Hex and an Orchid, so... Yeah, it's pretty scary. Like, you know, I think you need to be in packs of two. Like, you, you need to stay together. Funnick is going for a four staff defensively, I, I imagine. Yeah. Comes a <clears throat> little bit of foray into the enemy jungle. Funnick is pretty farmed. He's got some gear. Radiance the bottom on top of that would be pretty, pretty nasty. Yeah, babe, creeps in base, Necro 3 is hitting the bottom tower. Oh, Kuro, he's gonna get gripped and shackled. Talk about the double hate here. Puppy not gonna be able to get away either. Drops to an auto attack. Arrow on the way to. He's gonna be dropping next. Massive rewards dropped. Actually only gonna be doing hero damage and the crits coming out from Havost. He manages to get way to and Demon. TC trying to push in bottom but he's not able to do much of anything. So it's basically they traded their supports. Yep. They also got a good bit of damage done on the tier three tower bottom. But every time a fight happens like that and you trade evenly, you gotta keep in mind that Navi is getting a ton of necro. Oh, liquid. Oh, quick, so why do I keep calling him liquid? Just walks into an arrow and he drops a gem. <laughs> I think the gem was originally That's huge. Navi's, yeah. Like that is absolutely huge. Does but he again, have buyback? He does, he does have buyback. I want to, I just want to point something out. Even though Quakefoot just got hit in the face by an arrow, and died, mm -hmm. every single wave is right outside Navi's base. Mm -hmm. Well, the top is already like that because of the, the racks. Bottom is because the wolves are constantly there. And it is just... This is sure just like Enfos, man. <laughs> it's not even Dota anymore. It's just Enfos. It's just endless waves of creeps like right <laughs> outside of your base. And it's like, no offensive spells, please. I just want to hit things and get money. I mean, the way you look at it, you have Dark Star who could push extremely safely. You drop Iron Shell and you back off to the jungle. You have Lycan with Wolves who could essentially do the same thing. And uh, Storm Spirit, you know, you, you pop in, you drop a wave, and you walk back into the jungle. <laughs> how, how do you stop? How do you get those pick off and get the wave pushed back up? Are we going to see Maelstrom as an item to go back onto if you're Mirana? I think Mjolnir is still really solid. I mean, there's what? 
two heroes with BKBs, I guess. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily just for the team fight potential. It's just like you were saying. It's it's being pushing able to push waves. out the lanes, right? So, if you can't do that against Liquid, no matter how many times you pick, as long as they have money for buyback, you're not going to be able to end the game. Like it's just going to be oh, constant thanks. fighting against mass creeps. So, unless actually, you pick um, them ten times. I mean, the later the game goes, sure, you're going to have, like, longer and longer respawns. Like, when heroes get 25, say somebody buys back or they do, like, a dieback, right, where they die again, then, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a hard time because I think it's, like, 120 seconds Yeah. if you die back and you're level 25. Yep. So, I mean, is. that's a while, right? Like, that's enough to pretty much push out every single lane. Yeah. I but go for a cup of tea or something, so. I think Navi are starting to run into the issue of we just don't have enough wave clear. I think there is one way they could do it is fight Liquid at the Roshan pit. Mm -hmm. If you sense they're doing Roshan, you just push out mid and go to the pit as quickly as possible. And if you kill like three or four there, you just basically win. Yeah, well, maybe. Depends on if they have buyback. Because the later the game goes, if like if you're sitting at the Roshan pit, right? Like you can just walk mid afterwards, cut the creep wave, like like the next two that spawn, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then you get there about the same time that your creeps will get there. Yep. So then you can just be like, yep, doesn't even matter if our other two lanes are pushed in because top's dead anyway. And our tier four is still alive, even though it's at half. So you know you have a little bit of time. And since it's like 41 minutes in already, say the next Roshan spawns in what, five, six minutes, something like that, you're going to have so much damage then on your cores. So stuck. Yeah, it's actually spawning way sooner than that. Two minutes. Yeah, it's spawning in about two. So I've actually deciphered this. It's taken, what, seven weeks <clears throat> of. It's really weird. They could have just put a number there. Yeah, they did have a, they just had a clock before. And a half. How hard is it? Yeah, but it's still like, it could just be like a number. Yeah, but that's because someone explained it to me. But yeah. if I was to look at this. Yeah, I know. The outer one is eight minutes, and then the inner one is three. Yeah, but or if. Or two or one. Or two. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but if, if someone like new to the game is looking at it, they're like, what the hell is that? I didn't learn hieroglyphics in school, man. Dude, they're going to kill. No, never mind. Boba's got a blink as well. Search just ran out. He's going to research. That will be it. Oh, bottom, TC. He's just down here, man. He doesn't even care. He's got a BKB. He could actually just walk up there with BKB and just go ham on the yeah. tower. Again, though, every time that these kind of fight changes or gets traded, Nobby's farming way more because they're farming Necro books. Yeah. When I play against this, this is the style of Dota that actually infuriates me the most. Oh, I, yeah. I, I just panic. I don't know what to do. What? These games are the best games to play. No. And I'm talking about Navi side. You want to be Navi in this game? Yeah, man. You go to 79, you get big items. Just you win Dota. It is 79 <laughs> minutes. Look at the terrors. Like, every time we look at the terrors, they have like 200, 300 less HP. Because you just keep summoning the Necro Creeps, and eventually you're just going to lose. Yeah, I mean, I, I lo personally love playing on the back foot. Just like finding small nuances to come back in the game. You are weird. It, it's not a win if you don't. There's no challenge in it, you know. Yeah, but there's a challenge in like having a five-on-five -five epic team fight, and there's a challenge of, oh God, how long can I weather the storm? Super exciting. Morale well, starts to get low on the team as well. When nah, man. Lumi's having a great time. Everyone I'm else having is a great like time. crying. Like, I'm, I become the motivational speaker. Like, this is some Independence Day speech going on right now for me if I'm on Navi. All right, guys, we got this. Independence Day speeches. All the speeches. Independence Day. Yeah. We're gonna live on. Today is no longer. What, Except what, when you play Naga. Go? Fuck that. Like no Naga. Okay, that's that's the same no, style. No, see Naga. Dota, it's like you even go to her and she saw. Like that's just like what? Okay, so that makes it harder. That should be like up your alley, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can't just say like there's a limit. Okay, now okay. it's too hard. Look at this bottom. But oh. you got to stop. Don't but even matter. Now, now what? It's just Yo, the lane. Get top. You throw out the an air splitter and you die. That's what you do. Ooh, the pick's going the other way. He's got a hex. Stops the TP. Kuro comes in with the lift. What is he going to be able to steal? Looks like the BKB is going to be popped. He's going to kill the most here. He's going to get blink initiated by Demon as well. Quite he wants to go for more. Kuro has ball stolen. He's going to try to go for the ball TP. Gets all the way into the river, actually. TC, though, going in bottom. Wants to go for the base. Dodges the Echo Stomp. Very nicely done. I'm surprised he's actually not going for more. I guess the most did buy back. Dude, Wei Chu does have a grip, so they could definitely go for more. On the top lane, though, mid. Top is getting pushed out. They could just go down mid. Meanwhile, Roshan has spawned, so... If Liquid is aware of this, uh, they definitely go into it. TC is just farming at tier one. This is panic stations. What's going on? Go into the Roshan pit. Haste. Scout it out. Haste. Do you think this is mostly down to having Lycan on your team, or is it Shadow Shaman is a part of it as well? 
I think Storm's a huge part of it. The fact that he he is a split pusher and a pickoff machine at the same time. Yeah, we haven't really seen him split push that much though. Well, he's been farming alone a lot. That's yeah. basically the same thing as split okay. pushing. Like if you're sitting in a lane and spamming remnant on it, you push it. It's it's cool. Vol's just running into. He gets bashed. Okay. What is he up to? He's bait. Oh, has got the BKB in two seconds, so he can go. He's in such a good spot, though. He can just come in from the back with ult and BKB and just kill the supports. And yeah. Demon can blink in as well. Oh, oh, Dendi, he gets pulled from the low ground. The Hex is going to be there. No BKB. Dendi's going to drop. Kuro, he's going to be forced to fall away. TC in the back with his BKB pop. Havos pops his own. TC comes in. Leap out of the pit here from Havos. Wants to throw out an arrow, but doesn't really succeed. Way too. Going to be dropping Earth Splitter inside of the pit as well. TC can't really do much. Looks like he's trying to finish Roshan. Storm got the Aegis. Stuffed by Koikfa. TC going to go down, though. Puppy picking There's up the cheese. double. Somebody's going to be a respawn. I think Dendi got it. No, he didn't get it. No. Who got the cheese? Havos picked it up. Okay, right. Kuroki's got the ball. But essentially, if you look at who's dead, it's going to be five alive for Navi. It doesn't matter if you get the Aegis and cheese. Meanwhile, the creep wave is also pushed. If you look at top, it's slowly going into the base, but not quickly enough. I do believe Navi have done. Here really comes Darkseer buyback. He yeah. essentially didn't use it's anything it's because he, he just got focused. So he has mech, he has shivas, he's got the blink wall as well. So here comes initiation once on Havos. Havos does not have buyback. They're going to burst everything on here. Cheese. cheese gets used. The grip that's going to be used on top. Ice Blast gets on, but he's already dead. Puppy on the run. Puppy's going to go down to Radiance one more ball, tower. but they it's don't have the mana. Puppy's going to get... But the grip coming up from Kuroki. The Nightmare is going to cancel it. Koifa's on the run. Koifa pops a BKB. Koifa's also got buyback, so it doesn't really matter. No buyback coming out just yet. Meanwhile, there's a chase. They're going to pick off Kuroki. There's a TP back. Look at bottom lane. Demon is pushing the racks with the wards. All right, he's got Blink Dagger as a way back as well. I'm surprised he's not focusing on the range racks. No, he's not going to go for it. go home, Lumi. No, he, he baits out the glyph, which is huge. I think I think what Koifa is waiting for is buyback. Havos died wave. back though. Havos is dead for three minutes. Yeah. Also, also, uh, Dendi does not buy back anymore. He had to use it. Necro two just got picked up here by, uh, by Demon. Holy shit. Man, that was such an insane grip steal by Kuro too. It was so important at that point to have that spell, because it was the only reason Koifa died. Like but if Koifa was alive right now, Radiant's which he would have lived. Barracks. That's what I was saying. No, he can be alive. He can buy back if they want to go for the gusto play. They're just know. not going for it. Barracks. They just got the racks anyway, man. Necro book three and wolves. Pretty good units, man. That's what I was saying though. Like should he even use the fiend script? I don't well, know. I mean the fiend script did result in killing Havos. Yeah. So okay. because right after the hex wore off he cheesed and he was at hundred percent when the fiend script like first got on him. But I still think it's worth it. There's a lot of stuff on the courier, man. Did he just finish? Did he just oh, finish sure. two items? Who? No, he just finished the hex. Okay. Oh, that's big hex. They lost two racks, though. I mean, now they're they're down their melee racks bottom. I guess the range racks is still alive. Yeah. Top is completely dead, and they lost the top tier four tower. So, Navi are basically uh, they're in rough shape, man. Yeah, I mean, Liquid, if you look at them, eventually they will have three Necro 3s, Master Boom Wards with Axe, and then Wolves. It's kind of filthy. <laughs> it is it's extremely filthy. There's a lot of Necro books, a lot of wards, a lot of damage. Yeah, Slide of Fist, though. If you're Demon here, do you just save up for Boots of Travel? Well, he wants to finish his Necro 3. I don't think he cares about Boots of Travel. I think you go Refresher. Yeah, have to his next inventory spot, he's still going to have room for TPs. unless Because he can sell the smoke. He has two consumable inventory spots right now. Mm -hmm. So basically, he can always have a TP and finish Book 3 and have a Refresher. And Look never at these have Necro upon... <laughs> How did it get up there? <laughs> they climbed. I guess he oh, was they just facing the cliff. Yeah. Oh. No. no, he was facing the cliff. If they, if they got Earth Splitter, they would have taken damage. <laughs> it was just like farming these. They're 200 gold apiece, man. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. Except Kuroki's gonna die to him if he tries to farm. Demon Working, blinked up there and then uh, TP'd out. Okay, meanwhile, there's just Ice Blast going to the bottom portion of the map constantly. I'm not sure exactly why. I'm trying to. They were scouting out Demon. Like he. Oh, they because he's always blast. in the trees? Yeah. Because he's Double basically been sitting damage. in lanes, like waiting to go in. Like, just keeping the lane push, and as soon as a fight happens somewhere else, he just uses that to his advantage. That's what the smoke's for. Yeah, and, and also Na'Vi, like, they have to take fights outside of their base. That's yeah. the only way they can get back into the game. Because if they're just constantly on defense, and they have two lanes constantly pushing in no matter what, it's way too hard to try to get to Liquid's base that way. There's still a tier 2 safe lane for Liquid. 
So basically, they can push mid and they can push bottom, but they can never push top unless they like completely team wipe liquid. Yeah, and they don't have a lineup that could basically say, "Hey, I'm gonna kill your racks in two seconds." So. Yeah. Even if they win, they have to win so many more team fights. Navi is very, very far behind. So let's just say that, let's pretend that Liquid wins this game eventually through attrition. What would you say the turning point th for this game was? That Roshan where they gave up the Aegis and Cheese yeah, and just got the Rex? When they got Going the Rex down against Liquid's team is game changing because not only do you have heroes who can be mobile, like a Blink Shadow Shaman, TC with a BKB, who more or less is unkillable by Na'Vi, unless they manage to jump him with like a Hex or something, which Funic didn't have before. They're going for a bottom, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> they're just going. I mean, the Range Rax doesn't mean much. I've... Yeah, but it's more pressure. Right? Yeah, they're going top, uh, through they're, the mid. Are they going mid? For the tier threes? The wave is actually pretty close to the base in all lanes, so. This is kind of the Dude. problem. Koi Fight's playing the base. He's gonna get hexed on me. Meanwhile, it's gonna through the mid lane. Master Burn Ward's gonna get dropped. Look at tier three. It's dropping so fast now. The ward's gonna go for the melee racks. You can see that TC's going for the bot racks as well. It doesn't even matter if the storm survives or not. The raxes are going down. That's mega creeps. GG. Right now, you start playing Dota, guys. All right, that's it. Lumi time. Yep. This is Lumi's wheelhouse. All right, what's your game plan? Maelstrom on everybody. Okay. I mean, really, you have to go all in. That's the only way. Yeah. <laughs> like, you either just say, okay, we lost, or you go all in. Same thing. What is the career? Is there a rapier? No, it's just a Daedalus. I was there just checking the career. I mean, even with a rapier, do you do enough damage to the creep wave to push it out? No, it's time for, like, that 55-minute battle fury. Battle fury, to me, is, like, more effective than rapier at this point in the game. Well, if we're clip. talking in terms of sheer damage to clumped up units, Battle Fury is the best item. Yeah, especially against Dark Seer. I'm kind of surprised Dandy didn't go for it in this game. I think the idea was the Natural Order and the Desolator have a really good synergy. Yeah, yeah, it does, of course. But you also have to consider that Navi were really far ahead. And when you're ahead, Desolator is actually a very strong item because not a lot of heroes have a lot of armor mm -hmm. that early on in the game. So I get why he would go that. But I also think that not having a BKB makes him very susceptible to Liquid's lineup once they start getting Blink Daggers, which Demon had at, what, like oh. 20 minutes? Phonix Trap, Ice Blast's gonna come in. Went down to about half HP. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, being Megid, I, I don't really... Outside of taking, like, one crazy good fight, and just going Dang. completely nuts. Look at look at Navi. They're down to the mid lane right now. Dendi has a bot, so he could join in. But meanwhile, they're gonna go for Funic. Funic does have bots, so he could also join me. But even if you push the base, yeah, Liquid push like five times faster. Yeah. So basically, what they need to do, Navi, is force Dyer's TPs back and, and win a fight in their base. And then win a fight when they, they back, back though. Like, look at these necro. They babies. almost have a naked throw. Like. Even in the case they base Ray as well, they're gonna go for it. Master from where it's dropped, Funny goes in, gets hexed though. Earth Splitter gonna do a little bit of damage, but it's not quite enough. Dendi throwing out the sleight of fist, limbed onto Demon as well, but it's just not enough, man. They all need to go care. back, and Puppy even dies as well. So Quickfin manages to pick him off in the meantime, and that's probably gonna be a GG right there. Team Liquid wins a game against Na'Vi, and we just talked about how important this match for Na'Vi is for the top six race. Yeah. That was a pretty well played game. That was filthy. They need to go have a shower. <laughs> they got one more game coming up though. <laughs> I mean... The way that Liquid played it, they had to play it that way. Yeah, it was really smart. Like, given the fact that the laning phase didn't go amazingly for them, Dendi started off pretty strong.